Oh, um, either John or Joe, one of you doesn't have yours muted, and we have some background noise. But maybe that's Andrew. It's probably me. I'm waiting to uh, go before the judge on a speeding ticket, so I'm waiting for my name to be called. But I'll be quick. I close the door. We are live. Thank you very much. I wasn't speeding. Okay, okay so we're back live. You. So, Mr. Thompson, can you uh, start over, please? Yes, sir, I will. Thank you. We're looking forward to the session that starts on Tuesday. Uh, the governor was reelected. We have 17 new House members. You know, we have some pretty ambitious uh, hopes for capital outlay, and I have some preliminary numbers. The word is that even though they probably won't do a severance tax bonding package, they will use $250 million in you know, general fund. That would amount to, you know, the typical third, a third, a third um, division, 2.9 million per senator and 1.8 million per House member. They're also talking about doing a junior appropriations bill, and that would amount to in $50 million, that would be 357,000 per House member and 595,000 senators. And that money, some of it could be used for capital. There's also rumors they'll do another one that would be based exclusively on transportation, although that has not been confirmed. As you all probably know, probably the biggest concern that we are looking at right now is that the chairman of Senate Finance has said that he wants to conduct hearings on capital projects. And so I, Mr. Motsko and our entire team are working to make sure that we provide the legislature with the information they need to evaluate our projects. But this is all part of a larger conversation about a prospective reversion bill. So I very much appreciate how hard the folks of the city of Albuquerque have worked to get ready for that hearing. I, we literally just found out about it recently. Um, I guess finally, Mr. Chairman, we'll be doing the best we can to track the bills and be responsive. I'll work closely with Mr. Jaramillo to make sure that the city is, is well represented before the legislature. But I will say this, that if anyone is ever in Santa Fe, or if there's anything we can do to make your desire to interact with the legislature better or easier, we're at your service. Thanks, Joe. Uh, let me ask you a simple question here uh, before I know you have to run, but this reversion bill that they are uh, maybe potentially talking about, um, are you concerned from your work with uh, our staff that there are some uh, issues on the city side that we need to, uh, if you will, work on before that? Because I, I obviously we don't want to revert any money and I want to make sure that we're in, in good shape. What, what's your sense of that? Um, you know, I thank you for that, Mr. Chairman. I visited with Mr. Abbey of that specifically, and he was impressed by the city of Albuquerque's efforts in our list. I think there are a couple of instances where maybe the information they have and the information we have might not be reconciled. So I think there will be some of that that has to be done. Um, as, you, as you know, we are having some conversations with Mr. Abbey right before the session starts. So over the weekend, if we identify projects that we think there's a, a total miscommunication, then it, I would like to be able to go to them, to the staff and prepare them for that reconciliation. All right, for sure. Um, yeah, let us know. And if you need uh, any of us uh, on the administrative side to, to do something, please, uh, obviously, uh, we want to make sure that we get the state what they need, but we also know that there's always a lag between what we have in our system and what the state DFA has, and um, it's always been a challenge, but maybe this meeting before the session will help clarify that a little bit for the LFC so that they can recognize that we are further ahead on many of these projects than the, than the state DFA has on their list. So anyway, with that being said, before you have to run, any members of the of the committee have any questions for Mr. Thompson, the Councillor Bassan? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Thompson, when is the reversion hearing going to occur? 
So I, I have an email that I will send to Mr. Minacucci that lays out the, the dates that they're going to do like higher ed municipalities and different, they're going to try and match them according to their governance structure. And I'm sorry, I don't have that right in front of me, but I, I will find that email and send it to Mr. Minacucci immediately. Okay. And then I won't keep you for the other thing, but will you please call me when you're done with your thing and this meeting's over and, and we can connect, please? Yes, ma'am, I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, and Councillor Bassan, I think if I'm not mistaken, it was either the 23rd or 24th is what I think staff had indicated to me, but we'll get that date specific for you as well. And Mr. Chair, if I can ask Joe to give me a call as well um, on a couple of items. And then uh, just a brief question regarding um, the reversion bill. Joe, as you know, has been around for, for a bit. I know they try to do this every once in a while. It never ends up being successful, but what do you think um, kind of the momentum this year? Because I think there is, when people look at the money and they see this pot of money in a piggy bank, they assume that it's just sitting there and no one's paying attention to it. Obviously the city, put in all the information showing that we actually have, you know, traction or we're in the process of, but we used to be able to um, get capital. It would sit in a pot for five years. They reduced it. I think I maybe sounds like I've already said this before. I feel like I already said it, but they reduced it to Councilor Pena, I think we lost your audio. Sorry about that. Uh, are you able to hear us? Councillor Pena. Hello. Councillor Pena, can you hear us? Hello. I can. Can okay. you hear me? Now we can hear you. you go ahead. We lost you right okay. when you said about the five years. Okay. So we used to um, get capital. We could use save it at you know the local governments for five years, and then because of this reversion, that was kind of the concession. They reduced it to, to three years. So it gave us some time to, um, you know, fully fund these projects, right? Because it's kind of like the example I give is, um, you know, we have a, a, a playground at a park, right? And we go and we know we need, let's say, $500,000 to build that playground. And we start off, especially even from the local community end of it, we start off and we say, hey, we need a playground. They say, well, you know, the city can put in a hundred or whatever, and then we go to the state, get two hundred. So sometimes it takes years to accumulate this this money. And um, I guess what I was say, what I went on to say on that is that you know, um, three years isn't a lot of time either. I, I really hated when they had done that. But so I'm wondering, what kind of momentum do you think? there is this year to really do something that would be so negatively impactful to local governments? Uh, Mr. Chairman and Councillor Pena, I think in some respects, as a message um, exercise, I think as a matter of policy, the legislature and the governor want to move towards not stockpiling funds as a matter of policy because there's billions that are um, sitting that being said, I think that this is largely being driven by Chairman Munoz from Senate Finance. And so I think they want to have the conversation to see if, I think to see if maybe there are some funds that they just know are never going to be spent and see if they could take those funds and move them into like a completion fund to finish projects. So I think that will be part of the conversation. You are right, I've never really seen a reversion bill since the Richardson days and at Bill 183. And in that time, it was really required because we were struggling so much financially as a state. So it's an interesting conversation to have when there's so much money. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that, Chair and Councilor Pena. Thank you, Mr. Chair, thank you, Joe Thomas. Yeah, because uh, that's exactly my whole thing. It seems like we're expending a lot of energy on this whole reversion thing when we have so much money. And the conversation that you know we're having locally with some of our elected officials is there's so much money. It's like trying to do the right thing with it. And then yet we're talking about kind of, you know, 
putting people a, a, a few steps backwards in terms of progress with some of the projects that don't have enough funding. So anyway, I'll stop at that. Thank you. And if you can give me a call as well. Take care. Thanks, Councilor Pena. Yes. And I agree. I think one of the things that we're also interested in, Joe, just not to belabor the point, is just making sure that that uh, if this is, you know, a, a sort of a one-off kind of thing that we focus on, on, you know, being more proactive about, you know, getting our projects funded as opposed to spending a lot of time on the reversions. But you'll get a better sense of that, I'm sure, in the first couple of days of the session. You'll keep us posted. So appreciate that. Any other questions for Mr. Thompson? Yes, sir. Joe, you need to get on to your other deal. You're being called right now. <laughs> there you go, Joe. Sorry, guys. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Joe. So if you all don't mind, uh, we're going to go to Mr. Jaramillo and have David give us a update on on what he's seeing at the session. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Councilors. Uh, David Hadamio, as many of you know, I'm the uh, policy lobbyist, and I, I do enjoy working very closely with Joe and his team and do plan on, on supporting them on the important uh, uh, money asks and financial aspects of the session. The reversion bill, I've been part of those meetings. That will certainly uh, be something to deal with, and I'm, I'll be available to, to he and his team in any way. Um, because it's a 60-day session, there's lots of policy for the new 17 members of the House to consider, along with the executive. Um, of course, uh, the, the, the city is very focused and concerned with uh, development, housing, and crime issues. And there will be bills on uh, uh, both financial requests as, as well as policy requests in connection with all all of those, specifically uh, the Metropolitan Redevelopment uh, 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 Bill. Uh, Terry Bruner and Karen Iverson has, have been working closely with myself and Joe and others, meeting with members of the legislature and leadership, uh, meeting with the Municipal League, meeting with lobbyists for other uh, municipalities around the state to uh, push this very important modernization of, of, uh, of, of metropolitan redevelopments. Uh, the, the, they're all over the state, and Albuquerque has one, but they range from both, you know, from Carrizoza to Clovis, and we're hopeful that um, we can get that bill past the uh, the finish line. Um, of course, um, MCI two has been rolled out um, um, this year. There'll be a, a lot of solid policy uh, uh, bills suggested, specifically in the areas uh, to protect uh, our law enforcement officers uh, with respect uh, to bomb squads and the use of lapel cameras in, in those circumstances, but also uh, uh, to take a, a, a real look at retail crime and uh, the organized aspects of re retail crime and to amend our criminal code so that this um, these organized efforts in the retail crime front that are really impacting our business community can be properly addressed by law enforcement in the, the district attorney's office. But the big, the big focus also is going to be, of course, on the uh, 5,000 uh, felony warrants that exist in the metropolitan area, working closely with law enforcement, the district attorney's office to identify those warrants uh, um, so that they can be dealt with. But of course, given that number, um, um, and you know, Albuquerque is not alone in having outstanding felony warrants, so there'll be a statewide request for funding. Um, so that over time, uh, various other systems can be addressed uh, so that we can accommodate the needs of a specific task force to go after these violent criminals that are out there on these warrants. Um, we're working closely with the county on that. We'll reach out to the judiciary, the public defender's office, and the district attorney's office so that there is a all hands on deck approach to that aspect of violent crime, um, unchecked violent crime in our, our community. Um, so, you know, again, we're always optimistic in a 60-day session because in the 30-day sessions, as, as you know, it's difficult to get things deemed germane. Um, on the policy front, it's also a matter of time uh, uh, being a crunch. Um, in this session, well, there'll certainly be challenges in the House with the sheer number of new um, um, House members. We reached out to uh, the new elected leadership and the new likely elected leadership and hope to hit the ground running um, Tuesday afternoon with the firm leadership in place to make sure that Albuquerque's 
objectives, both on economic development, on, on housing, but you know, most importantly, of course, on crime, are addressed and achieved as much as we can uh, this session. Um, happy to answer any questions from uh, counselors or other participants. Um, you all have my telephone number. Uh, this is a 24 seven job starting now, essentially. Um, and we all know that that's what we do. Um, uh, I'm in Albuquerque, I'm in my Albuquerque office now, but I will be in Santa Fe largely for the entire 60 day session. I welcome uh, any of the counselors who want to call me if you're going to be in town, happy to meet with you, happy to attend uh, committee hearings or meet with members with you. Uh, if I get a heads up, I'll usually be in the building, but I might be in a committee or might be in a, a meeting. But otherwise, I'm at everybody's disposal. I, I will be in Santa Fe uh, virtually the entire 60 days. Mr. Right. Thank you, Mr. Adamillo. Um, uh, any questions for David? Councillor Peeblecorn. I, I believe Councillor Bassan had her hand up first. Okay, Councillor Bassan, go for it. It's fine, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hadamio, I know that there's some legislation coming up, I believe that's going to be proposed, and I would just like to keep a thumb on it because I think it will be beneficial for Albuquerque, but I was talking to Representative Matthews about several things as far as shoplifting crimes and changing some of the laws with that. Uh, also, front end license plates and <clears throat> changing some of the laws for speed enforcement, which are all, aside from the front license plates. I know that that, but the rest of it we've been working on here in Albuquerque. And I know that the county is starting to work on some of the mobile speed enforcement as well. So I would, if you can just kind of keep us in tune to, to those are some that are catching my eye already as far as legislation. And I'd like to hopefully be updated on that because I don't know if I'll follow it as thoroughly as I should. Sure. Uh, and, you know, the, the retail crime bill I was mentioning earlier is, is the, the bill with Representative Matthews looking to aggregate the charges so that and it's really not it's not to target the one off shoplifter. Um, I think the business community in general is experiencing organized theft in a way that needs to be dealt with in a, in a, in a manner different than someone who in an act of desperation commits an isolated uh, act of, of, of thievery. So I think um, we're, we're watching that one very closely. The front license plate, back license plate is a bill that's sort of near to my heart because people have watched it for years. It's, um, um, I know who the lobbyists are behind it. I think it might have traction this year in a 60 day uh, session with the addition of the public safety component of it. Um, before it was thought of more as a cosmetic thing, but I think law enforcement will be there to talk about that it's a it's actually a legit public safety issue. So we're we're watching that carefully. And I'll certainly, I know we'll have these meetings through the session and I'm available to update you um, at any time. Um, offline, I can give you my cell phone number. I think you may have it. If not, um, somebody will be able to get it to you. Cell phone is always the best way to get a hold of me 24 seven during the session as, um, uh, Councilor Hubelcorn knows, but I think you had a question next, right? Well, if, if may I follow up, Mr. Chair? Sure. Sure. So I just want to heavily express my support for the retail crime bill. I mean, I think that most people are with with that on board. Like, I just it's definitely something that people have figured out that if they sort of steal a certain amount, they're free and clear, and they've gotten the message. And I think it's ridiculous. Um, so there's that, and then just. Please don't forget about the, I know that she was looking into the mobile speed enforcement and changing some of it so that if people are speeding, you know, we can maybe do a higher fine instead of just the maximum $100 fine um, for excessive speeding and turning it into a misdemeanor or, or something else. Will do. Okay, uh, Councillor Feeblecorn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to, and we might talk about this later, so if I'm jumping the gun, I'm sorry, but um, the, all the priorities that um, Mr. Harvino laid out are, are, of course, very important, but we put, this committee put a lot of time and energy into a full comprehensive list of legislative priorities that go well beyond, yes, that's it, um, that go well beyond crime, and so I just want to make sure that we are equally supporting um, all of the additional bills on that on that bill that we passed unanimously through city council and that those what I believe is called other community 
um, improvement or whatever the title that we came up with is, that all those bills receive equal attention. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hit the, you know, I, I was told we had a limited amount of time. So I hit the highlights and that's why I had this sheet. I was going to conclude by saying, I love this, these kinds of sheets. My eyes don't love these. I, they print it in a way that, because I'm almost a boomer and don't know how to print. So I will get it in the right size printer. And this will be something that I will carry uh, in my, my bag with me daily. To, this is a good bill tracker. Um, and we will be following all of these, uh, you know, the, the community-based bills, the housing-based bills. Um, there's lots of other bills outside, especially. In, and this is just a partial list because we'll also be tracking bills that um, may get introduced, that the, the city may, that may touch on these issues, um, um, that the city may want to jump on board to give support for. And so, you know, in addition to this, the list may grow. Uh, that's right. Um, and so thanks, Councillor Dubokorn, for that. Um, I think that was one of the items that we were going to talk about next. So um, but it's, that's okay. I think I think we all appreciate the fact that there's more than just the crime stuff. And certainly, I think Mr. Jaramillo and Mr. Thompson will certainly focus on, on the entire list as best we can. But I do think that, uh, David, um, do we subscribe to one of those uh, the bill tracking services that you all utilize to um as, as the session starts you know you'll probably be more responsible for putting the list of other bills that we haven't identified here um and maybe making that available to the committee um i know that council the council of people corn because of her work she probably knows how that works much better than the rest of us but um but it would be really helpful to have a, an updated list at least as quickly as you know, at least timely, if you will, during the, the session. Mr. Chair, if I might jump in, I did um, ask uh, Mr. Hertz um, to take the original list from the legislation and create a bill tracker, which I believe is what's up on the screen now. Right. That um, that is going to be updated. You know. Uh, I, I believe at least weekly, which is of course not as fast as things move, but this will be available to everyone um, and be updated by Mr. Hertz and, and the rest of the team here. Um, and I think it'll be really helpful for exactly that kind of tracking that you're talking about. Right, okay. Well, very good, I think that's exactly right. So David, if you guys look at this and then add your two cents, whatever you think needs to happen, um, that would be great. Okay. Um, any other questions related to either to Mr. Jaramillo's report or to Mr. Thompson's report from any other members of the committee? Okay, seeing none, then let's uh, move on to item B, uh, activities and coordination for upcoming legislative session. Um, I am assuming this was the area we were gonna talk about, Councillor Feeblecorn, related to this tracking uh, spreadsheet and maybe the capital outlay uh, tracking as well. Are there any other areas that we want to talk about? Maybe Mr. Manicucci, do you have any other thoughts? Not this time, Mr. Chair, although I believe Councilor Bassan may have a few questions. Okay, Councilor Bassan. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Mr. Chair, I am wondering, uh, and Councilor Fiebelkorn, with what you said about the unanimous, unanimously approved uh, priorities bill, <clears throat> and the multiple discussions that we had on this committee, mm -hmm. I'm wondering why a book was created by the administration to send up to Santa Fe to the legislature regarding projects for capital outlay and how come we haven't received it? Um, Councillor uh, Bassan and members of the committee, um, I have not received it yet. I think it was in the process of getting put together here in the last few uh, minutes of this day. Uh, as soon as I get a copy, or as soon as we get one, we'll get make sure we get it to you. Um, I think it was the mayor's intent as always, as we've done in the past, to try and put a booklet together that expresses um, the interests of the city as it relates to our capital requests, et cetera. And, uh, but I would have to look at the book to ensure that we're making sure that we've covered all of the uh, areas that you, uh, that were in the bill. Have you received a copy of the book? No, sir, I'm trying to get a hold of one. I just found out it existed after being told that one would not be created, repeatedly been told that one would not be created. At which point I remember us even on this committee saying, 
if there's going to be a book put out after the fact, why are we even doing this committee? I don't understand. And I think that it's 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 highly disconcerting to be told one thing for three years and have it happen every single year in the other fashion. And I have not received the book. I sure hope I will. Um, I was also under uh, the impression and, you know, this is the selfish end of it. I was under the impression that per this committee and per what was agreed upon between the administration and council and then approved by council that the North Domingo Baca Aquatic Center was one of the top priorities, which has now been shuffled to the bottom of the book or somewhere thereabouts. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm pretty upset by the fact that we were deceived. I frank, frankly, I believe we have been deceived as counselors and I'm very, very frustrated by it because we have these public meetings, they're on recording, all of us three counselors on this committee expressed our concern about it. We were repeatedly reassured that it wouldn't happen. And here we are again, where it, it, it does happen in its own way, in its own form, and it really comes as a slap in the face at the last minute. I appreciate your concern and I will uh, visit with the mayor about that. Um, I have not seen the book, as I said before, so I will make sure we look through it and I will visit with all of you uh, and, about the issue. And Mr. Chair, for the record, I've been talking to the governor's office with the understanding that the North Domingo Baca Aquatic Center was one of the city's top priorities. And so to find out that now I look like a liar for the second year in a row, I, I'm so, I'm frankly irate about it and I hope I'm wrong sure. because I, I look like a bonehead yet again because I was told one thing and now I'm going to the state legislature saying something and it comes back at me where I look like I'm lying or I'm misinformed and I'm the one that's ignorant. And that's not the way that this went down. Okay. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, let me look at, into it and I will get back with you for sure. Counselor, any other comments? Mr. Uh, Chair, I just, I'd like to just add in, I, you know, I didn't know there was a book. Um, I would really like to see it as soon as you have a copy. Um, I'd like to be added to the list. I will get that to you as soon as we get, uh, if, as soon as I get the book. <laughs> or as soon as we get the book, for sure. Okay. Mr. Chair, if I can jump in, I just can't on my phone get the, the, the raise hand function going. I'm here playing with it. And anyway, so I, I keep apologize. I want to apologize for keep inter for my continuous interruptions, but um, if I can, if there's no other questions and, and if I can add something. Go ahead, go ahead, counselor. I, I haven't seen a book, but I guess what I'd like to ask is, did was our staff aware that there was a book or were they not aware that there was a book? Um, Councillor Pena, this is Mr. Mancucci. Um, no, we heard about it, I think, day, just uh, inadvertently, day before yesterday or yesterday um, at that point in time. And, and, when, and when we heard about it, we weren't quite sure if the person was talking about last year's book or this year's book. It's not until this afternoon that Councilor Passan contacted me that we were confirmed there was a book this year. I understand. Um, okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Sure. I'm sorry, I can't figure out the hand function as well. But we've had numerous meetings with staff, and in those meetings with staff, I was saying that you know we need to get your projects updated by a certain day so that it could be included in the book. So we've been working with some of the counselors to, to be sure, like, I, I, I'm actually surprised to hear that you guys didn't know there was a book because we, we have been telling staff, like, please get it updated by this day so that we can be sure that the projects that you guys want also appear in the book. Mr. Chair. Yeah, I am uh, Counselor Hassan. Mr. Chair, Mr. Padilla, I distinctly recall repeated conversations on this meeting and in other sources that there was going to be no book this year because it was blindsiding and confusing and like a phone book that some legislators would sit on at some point because they didn't read to page 83 in the book. They didn't get that far, so they don't notice those priorities that are in there. In addition to the fact that we were told that a spreadsheet was going to be created this year rather than a book. We were specifically told that multiple times. So that's where now I'm wondering why. I mean, I know my staff didn't know about a book and we were told a spreadsheet and we all thought and agreed that might be better because it can be more live form and it can be something that 
Different legislators can scroll to see what is relevant to them, but not a book that things get lost by the end of the pages. Madam Chair, um, like, I apologize if I wasn't clear. What we had done is we had talked about the book and we were using the spreadsheet so that we didn't duplicate efforts in Santa Fe and have to have multiple different requests, some from the administration, some from counselors. So that was the intent of the spreadsheet. We did redesign the book so it doesn't have 85 pages. So that's what we had said. It's not going to be similar. It's going to be changed so it's not so long, so it's not so confusing for legislators. And that, that was what was supposed to be done. I apologize if that wasn't made clear. I'll take responsibility for that. That, But there was always an intent to have a book. It was just to streamline it so that it wasn't so long. And then we, we and I, I apologize if staff didn't know, but when we were asking to put the stuff in before a particular day, it was so that when we could get the built the book built and get it out and, and ready before the session started. But if there was any miscommunication, then that's an error on my on my side. And I apologize for that. And Mr. Chair, you know, I, I'm going to agree to disagree because and I, I accept your apology. Like, I don't even think you need to apologize per se, but. I'm going to say again, like we had discussed how useless so many legislators even thought this book was last year and how confused they were by it. And then it was agreed upon we weren't going to use a book. So that's we're just going to have to agree to disagree on that. But Mr. Chair, can you tell me, is North Domingo Baca Aquatic Center still a citywide priority that the mayor is going to help advocate for? Or has he backed out of that deal? Because I would like to know when I'm specifically asked by the governor's staff when they say, is Mayor Keller supporting this project as a citywide priority, and is it going to be in the governor's portal, or am I going to be lying to them when I say yes, or should I tell them no, it's a District 4 project? Councilor, uh, Councilor Bassan, the mayor still supports your project, and, your, and if we are asked whether or not the city or the mayor supports it, we will say yes, we support it, and it will be in the portal. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that confirmed. I just really wish the mayor and even just hearing how you phrase it, it's not my project. This is going to benefit Albuquerque. It, it really is going to benefit youth, seniors, competition, the economy. So I think that if, if the mayor gets asked if he supports it, it'd be great to have a little bit more oomph behind the support. Uh, but that will be for another day. Thank you. Councilor Bassan, I want to make sure. Look, I we support the project. It's in the book, is my understanding, uh, at least from what I've been told uh, as what uh, Mr. Padilla just described. So we will make sure that and it is a citywide priority. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, uh, my hand is up, I think, so. Uh, Councillor Pan, you're good to go. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, um, so, it, so when we see the book, it's going to have all the city projects, whether they're priority or not. I would just maybe make a suggestion that we we have some kind of preface in the book, so it starts with our resolution and what our priorities are, and then you know they can dive down into the rest of the projects. Um, Ma'am, um, Councillor, let me uh, talk to Mr. Padilla to see where we are with this and make sure that we. Uh, at least uh, include that resolution as part of the uh, the presentation. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, any other concerns? All right, um, I think we can now move to item C, which is the uh, report from our uh, federal lobbyists. Do we have Mr. O'Donnell or on the line? Yes. Can you see me? Am I here? Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, it is all up to you, my friend. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, council members, members of the committee. Um, I, I want to cover <clears throat> pretty quickly a, a few things. New members uh, in Congress, uh, how, the House Appropriations Plan for FY24, uh, some feedback from the Hill on earmarks for FY24, um, and this conversation about projects is timely because um, we're certainly looking for the list of projects from the city that are going to be earmark requests. So let me start by saying that new members, Kariakis and I went by a congressman. At that point, he was co still congressman-elect because they hadn't elected a speaker, but we went by and introduced ourselves for the second time to uh, 
Congressman Gabe Vasquez. And uh, we also went by a Congresswoman uh, Melanie Stansbury's office and Congresswoman uh, Ledger Fernandez. Many of the staff we know, we went by to talk to them, but we did see the members and uh, wish them well in this new 118th Congress. Uh, we did have a conversation with Senator Heinrich's office in early December, um, in which Rebecca Vizia, his chief of staff, said, uh, just in a casual conversation, keep in mind that public safety and behavioral health are high on uh, the list of um, projects for earmarks. And I, she said, because the, uh, the senator is on the Appropriations Committee, that she wasn't real clear how this appropriation process is going to go in FY24 uh, with the House Appropriations Committee now being controlled by the Republicans. Uh, Kiriakis, in a couple of conversations he's had over the past few weeks uh, from talking with uh, House staff, there's some concern that they may reduce the number of eligible accounts for earmarking on the House side. I think there were 33 or 37 accounts uh, last year on the House side and about 60 on the Senate side. The good news about earmarking in terms of whether you're in the House bill or the Senate bill or both senators asked for a, a, a earmark or, uh, and supported maybe one that a member of Congress asked for is that when you look at the final appropriations bill for 23, if a bill, if a earmark was requested on the House side, it wound up just like the Senate uh, earmarks wound up in the omnibus bill. So it wasn't like you had to be on uh, in the in both bills in order to be a, an earmark. So just wanted to report on that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, um, again, just to underscore that the city received about $11 million in earmark funds this year. Um, the other thing about earmarking is because um, we now have uh, Congressman Vasquez representing part of the city, we now have actually four members that we can make earmark requests uh, to. And I'm going to guess that <clears throat> just in the, the conversation that Kariakis and I had with uh, Congressman Vasquez, uh, he certainly understands the importance of his district in Albuquerque. So I think we should be thinking of that in terms of the earmark request that we are going to put together. Um, also want to highlight something that I may have mentioned before, and that is um, we have hired uh, two former Department of Transportation officials as associates to work with us on uh, federal uh, transportation grants, and if we need to involve them with earmarks, we can do that too. But uh, one of them was a person who served in the secretary's office during the Obama administration and had a lot to do in, in the review of, in fact, was the pivotal person in the secretary's office who did the review of grants uh, that were awarded to local governments and states. Uh, his name is Robert Mariner. And the other person, Chris Newman, is a longtime federal highway employee, and we hired him because um, Chris has extensive experience in the with, in the environmental end of federal highway projects, and also worked at the state level uh, for federal highways. He worked in California, so he's knowledgeable about state highway program operations and the interface between DOT and um, state highway departments, state highway uh, transportation departments. So I wanted to mention that. And then finally, um, the National League of Cities meeting is uh, March 26th to 28th. Um, I know that in the past two years, we have had uh, counselors come to town and there has been a, I will say this because I've, I sound like a broken record, but there is a direct benefit between counselors uh, coming to Washington, advocating for specific projects as well as more general city type legislation. And I would encourage you to consider that on your travel schedule uh, in the spring. Uh, Mr. Chairman, council members, members of the committee, that's my report. Happy to take any questions. 
Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Uh, Councillor Pena. My hand was still up from before, oh. and I can't figure out how to lower it. <laughs> okay, no problem. A any other uh, councillors uh, would like to ask John any questions? Uh, John, I may want to have one question for you, and that is, um, as it relates to earmarks going forward, do you think that the makeup of the house and and that situation as it unfolded to all of us uh, on during the last couple of weeks, uh, are those earmark issues going to continue to, are we going to continue to have earmarks or do you think that that's going to change? Uh, well, right, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, thanks for the question. Um, after the election, and I think it was pretty much that, I don't know why December 6th sticks in my mind, but it was in early December when the Republican conference uh, met and voted uh, to continue earmarks in FY24 for the FY24 preparations process. During the contest uh, for the speakership, one of the proposals that I saw was uh, put on the table by the the conservative group that were opposing uh, uh, Mr. McCarthy was that uh, the House be able to review individual earmarks. Um, I will give you the comparison. That would be like getting out the old yellow book and reading each phone entry. Uh, I think somebody along the line realized that was not going to happen. So I have not heard, and I checked with Kariakis earlier today on this, I've not heard, we've not heard anything about any more parameters per se about earmarking. However, we do expect that just because it's a new administration on the House side, a new majority, that uh, there will be some tweaking of the, um, the process and maybe eligible uh, accounts, as I mentioned earlier, but we see the process going further, uh, going forward. Uh, Rebecca Vizia did say that one of the things the Senate side thinks is there's going to be a more uh, difficult process in re reaching agreement with uh, uh, House Appropriations Committee as they go forward uh, this year, but. You know, that, that that's kind of early on speculation. I don't really know that if that will happen, but the earmarking process will go on. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, just want to make sure as we start preparing the conversations for the National League of Cities in March, et cetera, and, and meetings on the Hill that we get a sense of where that is. I also just want to take a moment just to thank you and your staff for the work you all did with uh, our members of our delegation um, in securing some funding for some projects uh, this last appropriations process. I know sometimes uh, we all assume that that's not happening behind the scenes. And so we appreciate that, especially the, the funding that was made available uh, for the uh, sobering center um, at, uh, at Gibson uh, funding from uh, both Senator Heinrich and Representative Stansberry will be super helpful in getting that sobering center facility completed. Uh, along with the other uh, projects that they funded this go round. Anyway, uh, any, anybody in the committee have any other questions for Mr. O'Donnell? All right, uh, we'll move now to, uh, thanks John, appreciate you and Kariakis. Uh, going you. on to item D, other business. Uh, any other business uh, from any other members of the committee? Okay, well, um, having uh, have no other business, I will just say, counselors, um, look, you know, uh, let us get back and look at this issue with this uh, book. I appreciate, Councilor Bassan, your concern and and take to heart your uh, frustration about this. Um, I will uh, we'll look into that and make sure we get you all copies and uh, and let's see if we can't get ourselves back in a a better situation. I appreciate that very much and. Uh, We'll, we'll keep you all posted as we move forward. Um, anyway, with that, uh, we will adjourn our meeting for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.